Thanks for joining us on this week's edition of the Coach's Corner. We are right here in the heart of the Auraria campus in the Tivoli Brew House. If you love Tivoli beer or one of the many guest taps, if you want a cold one, this is the place to be. I'm Sean Tafoya and I will be dropping some Roadrunners knowledge on you right here on the Coach's Corner. For this edition, we will have head baseball coach Jared Otis talking about his team's RMAC tournament run. Outdoor track and field coach Janice Christopher will ask her about the RMAC championships. And sophomore right-handed pitcher Dane Rowley, he pitching excellent game in the RMAC semifinal matchup against the Colorado School of Mines. But before we bring in head coach Jared Otis, let's get you caught up on the week that was MSU Denver Sports. The baseball team ventured to Grand Junction for the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference's tournament. They took on CSU Pueblo in round one and in a wild back and forth game. It was the bat of Kale O'Donnell who came through in the 10th inning with the RBI single to edge Coach Otis's squad 12-11. After dropping game two to mine 6-5, the Roadrunners used four RBIs from Jake Ekman to defeat Regis 7-5 to advance to the semifinals versus Colorado Mines. But the bats never got going, falling to the ore diggers 3-0. That ended an exciting season for our baseball squad. And the outdoor track and field team competed at the Colorado Mines last chance meet in Golden this past Sunday. Sarah Hughes hit a provisional time in the triple jump, reaching a mark of 11.8 meters. Julian Delaney just missed hitting a provisional mark in the 200 meter dash, posting a time of 21. 0.46 seconds. That is just 0.08 seconds off that qualifying time. The Roadrunners will now wait to see if their provisional times will hold up to earn a spot in the NCAA championships in Bradenton, Florida. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for the outdoor track and field team. And now we bring in head coach Jared Otis from your men's baseball team. Coach, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing excellent as always. It's, it's so great. Yeah. It's good to have it's, you back. You know what? It's good to be back yeah. and it's good to have you on the show. So let's talk about that RMAC tournament run which started last Wednesday. First opponent, CSU Pueblo. And that game was a wild one featuring 23 runs, 36 hits, and the Thunderwolves jumped out to a 6 1 lead on your ace, Javi Vega. What was going through your mind as you just watched that one unfold? Uh, just, uh, you know, just to continue to grind through the game. You know, that's. We've shown that we can score runs, and you know we knew eventually we hopefully be able to hold them down. And uh, when Ekman hit the grand slam at that point, you thought, well, we've got a chance to win this thing, and it may turn into a shootout of a game, but we've got a chance, and and that's ultimately what it came down to. Yeah, you mentioned that grand slam. Bottom of the fourth inning, you guys put up six runs, including that grand slam from Jake Ekman, who would go on to have a really incredible RMAC tournament. We'll talk more about him later on in this segment, but. Uh, in that fourth, you took a 7-6 to six lead, um, and did you say to yourself, well, I guess that's how this game is going to go, just yeah. the shootout kind of yeah, atmosphere. that's what it was. It was just trying to score one more run than them. You know, yeah. that was the, the ultimate goal as you kind of went through that game. You know, some games some games are 5-4 ball games, and, you know, you got to score whatever you can, and then there's other games where you just got to say, all right, let's go score as many as we can, and that was one of those games. All right, so let's fast forward. Top of the ninth inning. Your squad had an 11 to 8 lead, and you know Pueblo just ended up running into one, hitting the three-run home run. Um, what was going through your mind? Where you kind of like felt like you were kind of in a movie, where it's you know it's just man, the wind just isn't going to come that easily in this yeah, one, right? Yeah, and that's kind of the way that game felt. You know, we did get up by three, and you know we had Kale on the mound. He hadn't given up a run all year in the Armac. Um, and, uh, you know, they had the Hoffman kid up who's a really good hitter. And, you know, he uh, he got a ball and he drove it out of the yard. But when you sit there, you're like, well, it's still a tied ball game. We're the home team, so we're always going to have the yeah. last at bat. So at that point, we just had to, you know, manage it to where we could, you know, get the right guy up in the right situation to get the right hit. And, and, um, and we would end it. We wouldn't have to worry about going back out. You know, we had already burned our closer with mm. Kale. So um, you feel pretty comfortable when you're in that setting at that point, yeah. knowing that, that we have scored some runs and, and uh, done those things. So. so Kale O'Donnell gave up that yeah. tying home run, but he got a little redemption in the bottom of the 10th inning, got the, uh, the walk-off single. Um, what did you talk with your boys after the game, and what concerns did you have after that game moving forward in the tournament? Uh, you know, we just talked about getting to the next game. I mean, it's it's postseason time, so every game is going to be close. You're playing high-caliber teams, and, 
And, um, you know, I love their grit and the way that they didn't quit. You know, like you said earlier, we were down 6-1 at one point. And, and you know, so they continued to grind through that game. And, and they, uh, they you know, that's ultimately the character you want. That's that's kind of who we've been all year is there's no there was no quit in this team. And, and that's exactly what they did. And, you know, Kale blew the, blew the lead and <laughs> yeah. didn't get the walk-off hit. So he, uh, he kind of had a, a roller coaster of a day that day. So All right, you guys dropped your second round game to Mines, but you guys went back, took on Regis Friday. Inning elimination game, Ekman had two home runs, five RBIs against Pueblo. He came through once again, handing his third home run of the tournament and had four runs driven in. Was Jake doing just everything he could to just keep your team afloat? Inning, elimina inning elimination game like that. Yeah, Jake had a great tournament. I mean, he's injured. Um, that's why he only played in two of the four games. And uh, every time he went out there, he gave us everything he had. And, you know, we even had to take him out of that Regis game just because he had he'd ran out of gas. And, and the injury was kind of catching up with him, and he was in a ton of pain. But, um, you know, he kind of showed who we were as a team all year, you know, just somebody that was going to fight to the end. And, and uh, you know, once he came out, he was done. You know, it's just playing that many games, that many days in a row um, with, you know, quick turnarounds and things like that, it just – it was, uh, you know, it just kind of caught up with him, and the body couldn't heal enough. Like, you know, during the season, you know, he'd been battling this for a few weeks, but we always had four or five days off, mm -hmm. and then we played again, and we just didn't have that. It was just kind of game after game after game, some late nights, early mornings, you know, all of that. So he did a great job for us. All right, so after a tough couple of innings, Beecher Struby settled down on the mound. Um, Hunter Hoogaboom, Kale O'Donnell, you got great outings from that guy, from those guys. The, talk about their pitching performance and how big that was for your team in that moment. Yeah, once we fell to the loser's bracket, um, you kind of go all hands on deck. That's why Hoogaboom came out of the out of the, the pen. You know, if we would have won, he would have been our fourth game starter. But once you fall to the loser's bracket, if you don't win that game, you had to go home. So you got to run your best arms out there. Um, so, you know, he did a great job. And then, you know, Kale came back and, and finished it up. We were able to get him a day's worth of rest in between his last outing. Um, so he kind of, you know, he was able to shut the door on him. All right, so you took on Colorado Mines in the semifinal matchup. The winner would go on to take Colorado Mesa in the championship. Uh, in this game, you ran with Dane Rowley, the sophomore. Uh, really, really big game. And he has been coming in in relief for most of the year. Was the thought process that he would only go a like two or three innings, or were you expecting him to go that deep in that no, game? No, we were just hoping to get two to three innings out of him. Yeah. We we're going to run the next guy, and you know we got to the fourth inning, and you know he was kind of the conversation of yeah, we'll kind of see where it goes, how I feel, and and literally from the fourth to going into the eighth inning, he would just come out and just be like one more, one more, one more, and we just kept running him out there. He did. An amazing job, first college start ever, and most people don't realize it, but he threw the night before mm -hmm. against Mines, um, and the guy that started against us also threw the night yeah. before for Mines. So it was pretty cool to watch those two guys go at it because they both threw great games. Yeah, Rowley pitched great, seven innings, just giving up six hits, two earned runs, but Mines pitchers, Clark Martin, as yeah, you mentioned, he threw well. stellar as well, going the distance, striking out 11 of your guys, giving up just six hits all game. What was Martin do, doing so well, and how was he, I guess, being effective? Uh, yeah. did, 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 I mean, the first time you've played under the lights at, Ma at Mesa's Field, did that have anything to do with you know, it? I don't, I don't think it did. You know, he's just a good arm. Um, he had an explosive fastball, kind of snuck up on you. It was kind of slow, 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 and the fastball, you know, had a little bit of velocity on it. He commanded his own. Um, we chased some pitches early on in the game that were up in the zone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I thought we made a good adjustment. I mean, if you look at the line from that game, you know, the first first two times through, that's ultimately where he accumulated a lot of his strikeouts. And then our guys did a good job of making some adjustments. And, and um, you know, the strikeouts dropped down. We started putting the ball in play. We just couldn't get the next hit. All right, so game's over, season's over. What would you tell your guys uh, after that game and when you look back on the season, how much fun was it to lead these guys? It was awesome. I mean, that's ultimately what I told them. They're such an easy group to coach. Um, they showed up every day. You know, we had great leadership from our seniors and our captains, and they were just they were they were so much fun to coach, like day in and day out. You know, it's a grind. You start in September and you end in May, and and they just they always showed up every day. They were self motivated guys. They wanted to have success. Um, they took the system. They took the 
the the picture of what the program should be and they they ran with it so i was proud to be their coach they, they did a great job all right so later on in the show we'll talk to dane rally the man who started that had great great pitching performance talk about where you found him and what you envisioned for him in 2018 yeah dane was a just from durango colorado and just a big physical body and um, you know, he got some time as, as his freshman year last year, and then he actually had arm surgery this summer. So the fall was kind of up in the air because he wasn't 100%. And then just as he went through this year, you just kind of started seeing him have more and more success as we were bringing him out of the bullpen in bigger games. And and um, he works so hard. His work ethic is off the charts, and he's so committed. And, and uh, you know, when we got to that, you know, to that game that night, it was just kind of we knew we were going to go to somebody from the pen and, my gut just said he was the guy to, yeah. to run out there, and, and he made me look good is what he did. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Coach. Well, we can't thank you enough for coming on the show, not only tonight, but all season, as well as all the hard work that you and your guys put together this season to make it a really, truly incredible and fun season uh, for MSU Denver baseball. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for having us. You do guys do a great job. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, coming up next on the Coach's Corner, we'll have Janice Christopher talking some track and field. Celebration is on for Mike Dunlap. The Skyhawks celebrate a second national title in program history and the winner of the 2006 Harlan Hill Trophy as Division II College Football Player of the Year is Danny Woodhead from Shadron State. ASU, ASU, ASU. I'm Congresswoman Diana DeGette. Every day, I see the impact that MSU Denver has on our region. And education within reach can truly transform a life. Congratulations on 50 years of commitment to diversity and inclusion. And may you have many, many more. Are you a college student that needs a place to live? Are you still living with your parents and want your own space? The Regency Student Housing is perfect for you. The community offers many amenities such as a fitness center, two basketball courts, big screen amphitheater, all you can eat dining hall, bowling alley, arcade, free parking, and a shuttle to and from the Auraria campus. For more information, please call 303-477-1950 or visit our website at regencystudenthousing.com. I'm Lexi Marr, senior defender for the Roadrunners women's soccer team. These teams looking for offense, and there's Marr, the all-conference defender. And you're watching the Coach's Corner. Get rowdy. I'm Anthony Grant, director of athletics at MSU Denver. It's because of your generosity and support that our athletic programs have been able to achieve sustained success and continue to be one of the top athletic departments in the nation. And you're watching the Coach's Corner. Get rowdy. Welcome back to the Coach's Corner. We're hanging out with Janice Christopher, the head coach for the outdoor track and field team. But before we get to some outdoor track and field, we want to tell you about the great promotions coming up here at the Tivoli Tap House. And you didn't even have to come into the Tap House for this one. If you head out to your local liquor store and pick up a six pack of Hellas, Siggy's Wild Horse Buck Beer, or Jet Malt Liquor, or Bohemia Girl girls pilsner they will be a, a prize that you can redeem right here at the tap house so get rewarded by drinking the beers that you love and are already drinking so now we say hello to janice christopher how are you doing this evening i'm doing well thank you awesome well we have a couple meets to get caught up on on the show first we'll look back to the armac championships happened a couple of weekends ago in gunnison uh, we'll lead things off with robert carlson who took first place in the long jump and uh, he also hit a provisional qualifying time of 7.32 meters. So give us your thoughts on Robert's performance and taking the gold medal. Um, it was really fun. It was a really fun performance. Um, you know, Robert, Robert likes to talk a big mm -hmm. game. And I, and I told him, well, if you're going to talk that way, you better put your money where your mouth is. And yeah. uh, we went into the finals, and there were three guys that were ahead of him. And they were all tied with the same distance. Mm -hmm. And um, last jump of the of the meet for him, he jumped that 7.32 and nobody could nobody could touch it. Yeah. So it was pretty exciting. It was really fun. There was a lot of people watching and clapping and um, uh, 
it was uh, it was fun. Sounds like a great moment. Yeah. So the lightning comes in Monday, that crazy storm on Monday. Pushed some events back to Tuesday, uh, but that didn't seem to affect Julian Delaney. He finished second in the 200 meter dash and fifth in the 100 meter dash. How did the junior come up with a couple of big performances, uh, even with the weather? You know, the wind blows on everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he uh, he just went out there and uh, he outran them. Basically, he just was tougher, tougher than they were. He just got the job done. <laughs> All right, well, we'll mention Sarah Hughes as well. Give her a big shout out. She earned the bronze in the triple jump. This was her last RMAC championship, and she went out on top to finish her MSU Denver career. Uh, she's now graduated from MSU Denver. Talk about her performance in the uh, championships. Sarah, um, you know, going into this year, I think I've talked about before, we didn't think that she was going to be able to really keep up with it and um, surprised everybody, including herself. And that uh, that jump, again, she waited till the end. She and Robert, I guess, were a bit dramatic. Um, and they decided to, she just went out there and uh, she actually performed very well. She was relaxed, she was confident in all of those things. And the, the mark that she had was actually a lifetime best. So with that mark, um, she officially improved three feet, six inches over the last four years with, with the team. So it was, it was a good way, really a really good way for her to, to end her career. All right, we'll talk more Sarah Hughes, but we'll switch gears. You guys took part in the, on the Colorado School of Mines last chance meet we talked about on the last show really the last chance to hit those provisional times. And she took advantage, uh, hitting the provisional time of 11.8 uh, meters in the triple jump and now has a chance to uh, earn a spot in Florida. Uh, when will we find out if her time or her distance holds up? We should find out tomorrow. Okay. Um, they, they, her, her mark at the conference championships was actually a little bit better. She mm -hmm. jumped 12 meters, 12.04 meters. And so that ranked her uh, 34th. Um, and I just looked at the declarations and she's still about 34th. Um, you have to be in the top 20 yeah. to get into the national championship. Okay. So it looks like uh, she and Julian and Robert are all going to just miss this year. Okay, so Julian Delaney uh, missed hitting a provisional mark in the 2000 or in the 200 meter dash by 0.08. How tough was that um, to see him miss by such a small margin? Well, that's where that that's you know that's where that. Luckily, he had hit the provisional mm -hmm. earlier yeah. in the year, but you, you always hope that uh, that they're going to be able to step up and, and do mm -hmm. it at the, the last moment. Um, it's it's hard. There's not a lot of competition. It's yeah. not. You know, he he ran his fastest time out in California. So um, yeah, it's disappointing, obviously for for him. And um, we're just proud of the way that he performed all year. All right, we talked about Sarah Hughes graduating this past weekend. What other seniors um, are? Flying the nest, if you will, and are, are you losing from this team? Um, uh, Brandon Croggy's last uh, track season was this season. Mm -hmm. He'll run one more cross country season uh, for us. Um, and then Glenn Taylor, who uh, technically on our on our roster was a junior, mm -hmm. he's a senior in school, and he's he so he's wrapping yeah. up his career. So he only ran three years for us. Um, also Rachel Rachel Shima Bukuro, who was a um, transfer from California. She also finished up her season. And uh, Lily Armijo, who ran sprints for us for the last four years, she's also also done. All right, so you finished your interim season leading this Roadrunners track and field team. How do you think it went? And uh, would you like to come back and lead this team again next year? I would love to come back. <laughs> Um, it, it actually it went, went very well. It, you know, our goal going into the outdoor season was to score 25 points, um, and we scored 30. So yeah. I feel pretty good about about the direction that we took and the, the work that we put in and the way that the athletes responded to my coaching. Mm -hmm. um, I had a lot of pos positive feedback from those athletes as well. So, yeah, I would love to come back, and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to do just that. All right, Coach. So that's all we got for you on this show. I want to thank you for coming on the show as well as all the other times that you've come as well and all the work that you've done um, to have a very successful season for the track and field team this year. Great. Thank you. Absolutely. So when we come back, we're going to talk some more baseball shift gears. Once again, we'll have Dane Rowley. We'll talk about his pitching performance, and we'll get to know him a little bit more on the Coach's Corner. Robinson stops on a dime, now to Cortez, the Cortez beating, and count the bucket, and a foul. If you can't get enough of MSU Denver sports, then you need to tune in to the Roadrunner Review. Get into the game with exclusive highlights, interviews, 
player stories, and of course the top plays that will have you jumping out of your seat. You can catch all the action on Comcast CET and at RoadrunnersAthletics.com. Brought to you by your number one volume Nissan dealer, Titans Nissan. Come in today and choose from nearly 1,200 new Nissans. Get 0% for 72 months with no payments for 90 days. During the bottom line event, lease the new Ultima for only $149 per month. Gives you both efficiency and performance. Looking for an SUV? Then choose the all-wheel drive Rogue at just $159 per month. Also available with optional third row seat. Bottom line savings at Titans Nissan in Aurora and Fort Collins. I'm Raquel Torres, senior guard for the women's basketball team. Runners, and there's Torres, three-point shot up and Oh, good. there it goes. Raquel Torres, the trifecta. And you're watching the Coach's Corner. Get rowdy. I'm Andre Harris, senior center for the Roadrunners men's basketball team. And here, here's Andre Harris with the jam, bobbing and weaving through traffic. And you're watching the Coach's Corner. Get rowdy. We're hanging here at the Tivoli Tap House at the Coach's Corner. We have Dane Rowley here. We're going to get to know him a little bit better. But before we do that, we want you to go shop at shopmsudenver.com. Get your MSU Denver mugs, skinnets, basketball jerseys, T-shirts, whatever you need to get decked out in your MSU Denver gear. Support your baseball team, your basketball team, all the teams. Shopmsudenver.com. And Dane... Thanks for being so much with us on the show tonight. Yeah, you're welcome. So your team just took part in the RMAC tournament. Um, what was the mood heading into Grand Junction? Uh, it was the first time back in the tournament in two years, so there must have been quite a bit of excitement, yeah? Uh, it was very exciting for me, being the first time there. For me, um, it was an experience unlike I had uh, seen before, and seeing the team and how they dealt with that was really cool. And uh, just the leadership of the team going into the, term, the tournament, how our seniors were able to uh, really lead the team into that and show us that baseball is just a game and you can play it the same, uh, the same way, whether you're uh, in the tournament or just regular season play, it's all the same. So, Man, how wild was that first game of the tournament against CSU? Watching from the dugout, you see the Thunderwolves take a 6-1 lead on you guys. Head spinning, but then the team rallies, takes a 7-6 lead in the fourth inning. Pueblo hits a three-run shot in the ninth to tie things up, and then you guys win it uh, in the tenth. What a roller coaster of a game. Talk about it. Absolutely. It was, uh, it was a great game. You know, our team has been kind of doing that all year where we get down, but we find a way to battle back, and we've been doing that all year. And we, uh, Coach Otis has done a great job of mm -hmm. preaching that to us, find a way to bounce back and get those runs back and uh, be able to win the game, and that's exactly what we did. We came back, we tied the game up, then we took the lead by three, gave it up in the ninth, and uh, they tied it up. But we were able to find a way to uh, get that extra run and win the game. Hey, as long as you get the win, that's all that matters, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> all right, so your guys went, lost the minds, then took on Regis, defeated them 7-6. to six. At what point did Coach Otis sit you down and say that you would be starting the next game against Mines? And what did you think as you hadn't, hadn't started a game all year? You know, it was right after we'd won the game against Regis, he, uh, he came to me and said, you know, we're going to give somebody the start for this game that hasn't uh, started all season, but we have a lot of trust in him. And he said, you know, we're going to give you the ball for, for, uh, for the next game and um, just go out and do what you do. It's, not like it's, um, it's the same as just pitching in any other situation. Mm -hmm. You're just starting the game instead of coming in relief, but pitching's the same. You still got to go out there, throw strikes, yeah. and get guys out. So... Um, it was probably about 45 minutes before the game, but I was thrilled, a little bit nervous, but yeah. definitely thrilled. So you pitched incredibly well in this game against a very good hitting team, Colorado School of Mines. You went seven innings, just six hits, and two earned runs. Talk about your performance and the seven innings. That's by far the most the, mo the most innings that you've pitched in one outing this year, yeah? yeah absolutely, yeah. Uh, this is the first time I've started since I've been in college, and uh, it was a great feeling to get back out there in the starting role and um, just to start getting outs for my guys and letting my defense work. That was the main thing. I didn't strike a lot of guys out, but I relied on my defense and kept them in the game, and they helped me out tremendously by keeping, uh, keeping guys off base. And, you know, I can't thank them enough. They played a great game, and, and uh, I think all around it's just a great team effort. We fell short, but uh, mine's a very good hitting team, and they're a very good team all around. And, you know, to lose to them – was disappointing but they're a very good team and we played as good as we could have so it was understandable but yeah final score of that game three nothing you guys fell can you give us a little insight into the locker room tell us what coach said to you guys after the game you know he just said what we've been preaching all year you know we fought the whole game we 
we couldn't come up with any runs, but we uh, we continued to put the ball in play and and uh, we played the best defense that we could. And mm -hmm. um, in that situation, they just they outplayed us for one game. And you know you got to tip your hat to them when they play such a great game as well. And uh, I don't know, it was just an all-around great game. And and you know he was just saying you know thank you to all the seniors for the leadership because they really did. They led us through the whole tournament and. Uh, their leadership through that last game was tremendous, and it helped us out uh, tremendously throughout the whole the whole tournament. All right, so you've had a little bit of time to look back, reflect on the season. When you reflect on what your teammates and you experienced this year, how would you say that the season overall went? I think it was uh, very successful as a season overall. You know, we we accomplished our goal of getting to the tournament. And, you know, that was our whole goal all season, just make it to the tournament. And then after that point, who knows what can happen? You know, any team can come alive at one time, and we. We played great the last half of the season and really came together as a team. And like I said, our seniors, um, their leadership really helped us out with that, I think. And they were the ones that led us to that point. And once we got into the tournament, it was anyone's uh, anyone's ball game as to who could have won it. And I think we put up a really good fight. So, All right, well, let's shift from baseball. Let's talk about you a little bit. Uh, you're from Durango, Colorado. Mm -hmm. Went to Durango High School. Tell us how you ended up coming to the heart of downtown Denver and playing MSU Denver baseball for uh, Coach Jared Otis. Uh, when I was a sophomore in high school, I um, my high school team was playing up here in the state playoffs, mm -hmm. and I got the start in one of those games. And um, their recruiting guy at the time was just happened to be at the game, and I threw a really great game. And they invited me to a showcase the, at the beginning of my junior year in high school, and I came up here and just started to uh, talk to the coaches and really started loving the feel of being in Denver. And um, my senior year, they offered me a scholarship, and I couldn't turn it down. This yeah. is a place I've wanted to go to school my whole life, so I had to I had to sign and play for play for this program. All right, student athlete, student being the key word in that one, your profile page at Roadrunners Athletics, Absolutely. it says you're majoring in marketing. Is that still the case? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm well, kind of. I'm majoring in business management, so kind of the same, okay. the same aspect, uh, just switch to business management, more versatile as a uh, degree program, but still loving it yeah. and um, excited to see what the future holds for me. What are you hoping to do with your uh, degree? Uh, I, honestly, I want to be a Denver fireman. I've wanted okay. to be a Denver fireman my whole life, and uh, you know, I've been working towards that, and I just got to continue getting my education. I want to get my education first, but that's a lifelong dream of mine, and I hope that I can live it out someday. All right, so you also have a brother who plays collegiate baseball. Your brother Danny plays at Missouri State University, right? Yep. So I have a couple brothers. I know the friendly competition, so we have to ask who's better at baseball, you or Danny? Oh, man, I don't know. I, I honestly just have to say he is. He's a great baseball player. You know, he's been my biggest uh, role model growing yeah. up as a kid, and he's helped me be the baseball player and the person that I am today. He's been the biggest influence on me. He's uh, he's outstanding at baseball and as a person as well, and he does everything right and tries to teach me how to do things as well, and he's been my biggest, uh, my biggest influence in my life. All right, so tell us what you like most about playing under Coach Jared Otis. Um, his leadership. I love yeah. the way that he's able to influence the team into playing and in, um, into the way he wants them to play. And you know, he gives you a lot of a lot of leeway as to how you want to play your mm -hmm. game. But um, in the end, he brings the whole team together and uh, makes sure that everyone's playing for the same common good, and that's for each other. And um, and I love the way that he makes winning not everything. Yeah, winning is important, but baseball is a lot more about um, the team aspect and becoming a family than it is about winning. All right, Dane. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We wish you all the best of luck in the offseason. And have yourself a real fun summer until it's time to come back in the fall and get, and get down to work. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks Absolutely. So that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Coach's Corner. We normally get you ready for what's next, but there is nothing next. So uh, we hope that you come back next week. We'll have Athletic Director Anthony Grant with us and perhaps maybe even a mystery guess. We'll see um, who who that is, and uh, we'll for sure have the athletic director. So you don't want to miss that as well. So come on back to the Tivoli Tap House next week for the final show of the season. A big thanks to Coach Otis, Coach Christopher, and of course Dane Rally for hanging out with us tonight. I'm Sean Tafoya, and we will see you guys next week.